it sounds different. It doesn't sound to me like a finished track. And it doesn't sound to me like a finished track that people hear and go, that sounds like a hit record. I'm starting to get asked a lot more recently about having tracks at minus 14 RMS compared to the kind of standard of minus eight, minus six, minus 10, around that kind of area, uh, minus 14. Because a lot of uh, the media like YouTube and places like that have all said that they are dropping the level of everything to minus 14 RMS or LUFS. And um, so people are kind of misunderstanding that I personally think because every single record label that I work for, and these are all the major labels that I do stuff for, they all ask for it at minus eight. Well, they don't ask for it at minus eight, but they want it at minus eight because that's what everybody is mastering to. So they don't want it coming back quiet at minus 14. They want it coming back at the top level that everybody else is doing. So every single person at this moment in 2019 is asking for around minus eight RMS, which is the kind of level that most commercial music is done to. So it sounds loud, that's quite pushed through limiters, that's not very dynamic, which is the whole point of the minus 14. And there are guys out there who'll be screaming at me saying, yeah, but loudness war, blah, 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 whatever. Everybody is asking me that I do commercial music for to get it loud and get it to minus eight at least. Some want it louder and then I have to start educating them a little bit to explain why they don't want it louder. But if everybody's asking for minus 14, we can get back to the days where when I first started, it was around minus 14 LUFS, which what that meant was it was about zero PPM on your meters. So it was peaking at zero, digital zero. And then it would go over by about one dB. And what you would do is put a limiter on it, like plus one, and then that would shave all the peaks off. It's like a clipper or something. And then that was the level. And that is about minus 14 LUFS. So it's it's pretty dynamic. It's just hitting the, the peaks are hitting around minus 14. Lovely. All sounds really nice until you play it up against something that is minus eight. Now, the reason why it's not just the fact that it's got a level change to minus eight. The fact is that you are putting more limiting on. So putting more limit limiters are essentially compressors. So the limiter is basically pushing the sound down in a compression way. But by doing that, it's bringing the RMS level up or the LUFS level, whichever one you're working to. So by pushing that level up, it's obviously changing the sound and crushing it and making it less dynamic. It's then going to get pulled down on um, Spotify or on all these different platforms to whatever they want to pull it down to, just so they can do a level match across all. But the fact is, when they've done that level match, it's going to sound, something that was originally minus eight and has been pulled down, is going to sound totally different to something that is minus 14 and pulled down. Now, people will say that they've tested the difference and the one that's minus 14 sounds louder than the one. And that all depends on how it's been mastered and who it's been mastered by. But from what I found is the sound of the limiter, when I'm mastering, the sound of the limiter is, is one of the important things that I'm doing. Limiting is super important when you're mastering. It changes the sound of it a lot because it's doing the compression, but also there's a lot of settings you can do on the limiter to then change that sound and to make it more open or different di things that it does in its algorithms to get a different sound. So as soon as you haven't added that element, it sounds different. It doesn't sound to me like a finished track and it doesn't sound to me like a finished track that people hear and go, that sounds like a hit record. And for me, I want people to go, that's what I want. I want it to sound like all the other artists out there. And that is putting it through a limiter and getting it to minus eight. And if someone's pulling it down, then they're pulling it down the same as Rihanna, the same as all these other artists that are hitting the level as hard as they can and then bringing it back. So you're gonna sound the same as them. When you're doing it at minus 14, you're gonna be missing that little element of the limiter, which is super important. Yeah, you might be more dynamic, but you're not gonna sound the same. You're not gonna sound as crushed. You're not gonna sound as poppy or as tight, or if it's hip hop, it's not gonna be as boomy. You're gonna have like, loads of dynamics so the track's going to be moving backwards and it's not going to sound the same it's just not going to sound finished so that is where we're at in 2019 for minus 14 and minus 8 so i'm mastering two minus 8 anybody that asks me to minus 14 is usually amateur there's not many pros in fact i haven't dealt with one pro who's asking me for minus 14 they all want it as loud as it can possibly go without sounding too crushed 
which is always around minus 10, minus 8, minus 6. Some people say you can get to minus 4, that's mental. Usually only dance music can do that because of the harmonics. Yeah, it's more to do with just getting it to the same level as everybody else that's out there, which at the moment is minus eight. I think I've ranted enough. If you like these kind of videos, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to like the video. Go to streaky.com, sign up to my newsletter. It's the Audio Anorak's newsletter. Become an Audio Anorak and you'll get discounts, giveaways once a month on the newsletter where it's just pointing you in the direction of good stuff that I find around the web. So if you like this kind of thing, then you'll love the Audio Anorax newsletter. Thanks for watching, until next time, bye.